Hello hackers! Welcome to the fourth video in the kernel module of Pwn College. Today we're going to talk about privilege escalation. Usually if you talk about privilege escalation in the context of kernel vulnerabilities, you are going to get a preview of kernel vulnerabilities right now, but um, in this module you'll really learn how to interact with the kernel and, and uh, understand um, and mess with kernel modules themselves without necessarily vulnerabilities, more like uh, reversing challenges, let's say. But um, it's not hard to imagine how vulnerabilities can happen. Um, there are two very important functions for every kernel module. One function copies data to user space from kernel space, um, and the other function copies data from kernel space uh, Sorry, well, yeah, another one uh, goes the other way. So one from uh, kernel space to user space and one from user space to kernel space. And these are like mem copies. And like any mem copy, like any transfer of memory, if authors aren't careful, uh, vulnerabilities can arise. And in fact, do arise very frequently. Um, kernel uh, bugs and, and their exploitation is one of the biggest sources of... Uh, exploitable vulnerabilities in the Android kernel, for example, it is a, a, a big uh, deal. Um, and it's not just memory corruption. Uh, all sorts of vulnerability classes occur in the Linux kernel, just like they occur outside of the Linux kernel. Um, so let's say you find and exploit this vulnerability, what can you do with it? The classic is to elevate the privileges of your running process. Every process has its privileges tracked by the kernel. The kernel tracks a task struct with a whole lot of info, um, including um, scheduling priority, all sorts of stuff. Um, but one of the things that it stores is the credentials of the process. And this is stored in a cred struct. And the cred struct has, among other things, the effective user ID of that process. Um, and if you overwrite that with zero, your root, because root has a UID of zero. So that's your goal. So as I made your privileges, you can overwrite your UID with zero and you're good to go unless there's some other stuff going on like uh, sec comp and so forth. And we'll talk about how to escape that in um, uh, when we put this concept together with jailbreaking. But um, for now, let's focus on elevating your uh, processes, privileges to an effective user ID of root. Um, it turns out it's actually easier than crawling through memory to find um, a field in a structure and overwrite it. The kernel provides two very nice APIs. One of them replaces our cred struct with something, some other cred struct. And the other one um, can create a cred struct for us. This prepare kernel cred, if you pass it a null, uh, pass it a zero, as the argument, it will actually create a cred struct representing a new session created by root, uh, un untainted of any uh, um, um, you know non-root privileges and so forth. It's great. So prepare uh, kernel cred will create this structure with all zeros, uh, where if you pass it zero, and then commit creds will um, set it as the uh, cred structure of our struct. And so all we have to run in order to achieve root access, once we have code execution in the kernel, um, is this, commit creds, prepare kernel cred, zero. All right, let's um, take a look um, at how we can do that. I actually have a demo module for us, oops. Uh, and that demo module is in a uh, pwn kernel and it is make root.c. It's a very simple module. It creates a uh, device in slash proc. It's Brazilian slash proc slash pwn college root. Um, it registers a bunch of operations for that device. Um, we can see immediately read and write. Uh, they don't do anything. They just a return invalid argument, e val. Um, and it registers this ioctal handler, right? And then the ioctal handler, we can see that if 
the we used an octal number of pawn and pawn is defined up here um, and we'll figure out what it is in a second it's some macro defined um, number and a parameter of 1337 1337 uh, it will log that it's granting us root access and then grant us root access this is great all right so we need to uh, create a program because this will need to be done from inside a program we need to create a program that opens this file slash proc slash pwn college root and triggers the correct uh, the octal with the correct octal number the correct octal parameter and then that process will magically become root it's very exciting so let's write it uh, actually let's write it here Okay, so first of all, we want to open proc. Uh, let's launch this and make sure that we have the file name correct. Uh, okay, we have this loaded. Um, here it is. So we're going to open this. In read-only mode and we are going to run our ioctl let's actually assert that fd is greater than zero that it opened correctly need to include assert.h for this okay um, we run ioctl on that file descriptor with some parameter we don't know what this is this is pwn we'll need to reverse engineer the uh kernel module to understand what it is and ox 1337 1337 and then um we should be root right so then we want to print f um after uid and get uid and let's do the same thing for before okay let's see what happens um so before it should be whatever user we start out as. After, if we did everything right, it should be root. Um, if you want to compile this statically, again, there are no libraries in our minimized system here. Um, of course, pwn is undeclared. So let's figure out what that is. So um, we have our kernel module. Um, it is actually compiled in here make root.ko this is our the kernel module itself it's just an elf that means you can object dump dash d it or open it up in binary ninja or any other tool um, and uh, if we look at device ioctl we see that it compares against 701 and compares ebx EBX comes from ESI. ESI is the second argument. Boom. 7001 is what we need. Compile. Now it worked. There's our attack. All right. So now let's become the CTF user. Now we're the CTF user. Of course, CTF's home directory is uh, has our my home directory of my system mounted. Here it is. Attack before 1000 after zero privilege escalation so um let's take a look real quick um at what we can do with this obviously after this we can read out the um flag file or we use the exec libc function to wrap around exec v to execute bin sh since um commit uh, prepare cr uh, cred struct null creates an authentic a, a full everything is is zeros um, the real user ID the effective user ID bin sh works just fine it won't drop privileges um, so this is argv uh, this is the function uh, the binary to run this is argv1 argv0 sorry argv1 is null just runs bin sh compile run boom 
add slash flag. We got the flag. There we go. Um, we looked at this make root dot C um, module and uh, figured out how to trigger this condition and wrote an attack dot C that triggers the condition calls um, causes uh, using the cyoctal the commit cred prepare cred to be called and boom you can imagine that you might in the future trigger memory corruption in the kernel and be able to inject code that calls this um, so what are some complications well uh, if you have to provide shell code, for example, that triggers this, you need to understand where commit cred and prepare cred, uh, prepare kernel cred is in memory, right? Um, in modern kernels with default settings have ASLR. It's called KASLR, ASLR in the kernel. Um, and so they won't be mapped at predictable locations, but these intro challenges have KASLR disabled and older kernels such as many of those on de embedded devices have KASLR disabled as well. Um, and there's a file called proc k all sims. It is realistically mostly uh, blocked off unless you have root access, but depending on the scenario, you might have root access and be attacking the kernel. Proc k all sims prints out uh, has the, the the locations of all of the symbols all the functions in the kernel including actually our module that we just loaded which is really cool but um, let's grab for prepare kernel cred boom there that's the address of prepare kernel cred and that's the address of commit cred and the rest you know you know how to do you have done this in user space kernel space is not that special um, otherwise I showed you how to debug kernel. So if you um, have debugging enabled, uh, you know, in Kimu, you can attach and, and uh, search around memory and so forth. Otherwise, you'll need a leak. It's the same problem as user space ASLR. Um, in fact, on this note, um, the kernel has a lot of mitigations against um, attacks. And we'll talk about those in a future module when we talk about putting together all of the uh, vulnerability classes that you know and mastered and have mastered together with operations and kernel space um, in our second uh, putting it all together module toddler two. until then enjoy these introductory kernel modules we try to give you a lighter load with them hopefully we succeeded and you can focus on truly understanding the kernel and how to interact with it. Good luck.